Aloha, Amy. Your audio. Yeah, aloha, guys. Pehea. My kai. My kai, my kai. You guys ready to do this? Yes, we are ready to do this. Okay, let's, um, we'll start maybe with just greeting that everybody, everybody that's joined us. Aloha nui kako, ovono, imi kalili, he kupa no hove imokupuni, ihane ia mahilo, a he baha olalo kiwi ke ia manawa ma ke kai ano. Aloha everybody, I'm Amy Kalili, raised in New York, and now doing some work in TV and communications. But most importantly, relative, I think, to the time that we have together this evening, fortunate as many of you, to call these beautiful people. Senator Kahele and his lovely wife, Maria, friends. So mahalo everybody for joining us. We hope others will jump on as well. Just wanna talk story or vala'au with um, Kai and Maria for a few minutes this evening, just to get to know you folks, to get to know your ohana, this ohana that's gonna be representing us, District 2 in the United States House of Representatives in the very near future. So mahalo to all of you for joining us. And then yeah, mahalo Kai and Ria for taking the time. It's been a while that we've actually seen each other in person. How are you folks doing? Great, we're good. You know, aloha ahi ahi kako to everyone. And thank you so much for joining us and welcome to uh, Talk Story with Kai and Maria. You know, this is the first of uh, uh, a handful of series of virtual talk stories um, that we are launching on Facebook between now and the November 3rd general election as just an opportunity to talk story and introduce ourselves and invite you into our home and uh, share a little bit about us and, um, you know, get a chance to just kuka kuka. So... Hi everyone. You know, I would chat, we were talking story earlier and I was saying, you know, one of the common questions you get in our local Hawaii community when you're wanting to get some to know somebody is who you model and what school you went. So maybe we can just start there with the two of you, you know, like just where you grew up, kind of um, a little bit about your ohana and some of your formative years. Maybe we'll start with you, Kai. Well, mahalo for the question, Amy. You know, I um, basically grew up my entire life here in Hilo, Hawaii. My mom is Linda Kahele. She came to Hawaii in the late 1960s as a young United Airlines stewardess. And she was uh, on a layover in Waikiki under the rainbow tower of the Hilton Hawaiian village when she met my dad, Gilbert Kahele, who had come home from the United States Marines and was a beach boy in Waikiki in the late 1960s. And they met uh, under the Rainbow Tower and fell in love. And my mother uh, moved to Hawaii, uh, made it her home, um, was a United Airlines Honolulu based flight attendant. And uh, um, I came along in 1974. And we lived in Honolulu before moving to Hilo. Hey, real quick, Kai, how many siblings do you have? So I have my sister, Noelani, and also my sisters, Ilima and Ihilani. And then I have an older brother, Gibi, from my dad's uh, first marriage. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a younger brother, Imaika. And he's the fisherman of the family, and he lives in Middle East. Nani. We'll get back to, of course, talking about Anakala Gil. Hey, Maria, I know a lot of people, me included, you know, we know Kai, we know, we know where he's from, but yeah, what, give us a little bit about your background, Maria, where you grew up and kind of your um, ohana a little bit. Well, I was born in Baguio City, the Philippines, it's northern Philippines. My parents, John and Eleanor Day, my dad is from Hawaii, my dad is from Kailua, Oahu. Okay. Um, so between, I was raised between Oahu um, spent some time on, on in, actually here in Hilo and on Kauai growing up and then back and forth from the Philippines to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent a little bit of time actually living in Japan and Korea. I, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit in Korea and I have been living here in Hilo since my, our first baby was born in 2014. Hey, okay. Although I kind of get a little bit background on why you kind of bounced around so much. Some people might assume, you know, military ohana. Why was it that you folks kind of lived in various places all over? 
Uh, my parents are missionaries. They were traveling around a lot, and those were the places that we, as a family, were, were in. Same question I asked you, Kai. How many siblings do you have, Maria? I have five brothers and three sisters. That makes nine total from <laughs> my mom and dad. That's awesome. You know, I wanted to um, come back to you, Kai, now that you've said that, you know, this kind of, I'm actually sitting here in our family home in Haleiwa. My father, you know, was one of nine as well. So just, and you know, that kind of shapes you as a person, you know? So just, yeah, I wanted to come back and talk a little bit, Kai, about your growing up, your Ohana experience. I know a lot of people know that you have Milo'i connections. They know who your father is, but yeah, what was that like? And maybe how did that kind of shape who you are, the way you think about things that you do, your value set, for lack of a better reference? So I was born in Honolulu at Queens Hospital in 1974. My dad at the time had just started a civil service career um, working for the federal government. And my sister Noelani was born in 1976. And my dad always wanted to come back to Hawaii Island because my grandmother was here. She lived in Lokahi Circle in public housing here in Hilo. Of course, our deep uh, roots to Mililii where my dad was born. And he finally got uh, the dream job that he wanted uh, when he was able to transfer back to Hawaii Island. And he worked at Pohakuloa uh, for the US Army and at Kilauea military camp um, from basically 1977, 78 until he retired in early 2000. So we moved to Hilo uh, when I was about, I guess, three, four years old. And uh, we've, we've been here ever since. We're, we're actually here right now on a, uh, our family property up in Waikiuka. My dad and mom purchased uh, a piece of property here in 1977. My dad built uh, our home here in 1978. And this is the home that I grew up in. And we moved back here in, in 2012 to be closer to my parents and to help our kids uh, and to get ready to raise our family here in Hilo. So we're actually um, back here in Hilo. And what was it like? Um being the son of um, Anakala Gil or Papa or, um, you know, a senator, what was that like for you, the many hats that he wore and kind of how did that maybe shape you and your values, your family values, some of the things that kind of direct the way that you engage with your Ohana and your community? So, you know, I first start to have early memories of my dad, um, in the late 70s, the early 1980s. And this was a very special time for him because he was part of that Hawaiian Renaissance we always talk about, right? Hokulea 1976, the Kankan in 1978, and all the things that that did for our Native Hawaiian community. And my dad found his passion, his, uh, um, you know, his calling back in the fishing village that he was born in and what he was raised in when he started Pa'opono Miloli in 1980. Uh, and so I got to see that world through my dad's eyes as an early, I would say my dad was an early rabble rouser. He was an early community organizer. He was fighting for Milo'i. He was fighting uh, developers that wanted to develop South Kona, specifically Kapua, where our family was come from. And I can remember being a little kid holding signs at contested case hearings in front of the land board uh with my dad who who really had um uh not much knowledge of what he was doing besides bringing people together uh early friends of his was malama solomon dante carpenter neil abercrombie uh clayton he uh the office of wine affairs was just created a native wine legal corporation was just uh, created and and he brought all those people together to help the fishing village of Middle East in the early 1980s. And that's what I remember as a kid, someone who always stood for what he believed in, who brought people together and, uh, um, you know, was somebody who loved uh, community and uh, was very passionate about what he did. So I was very fortunate to be um, exposed to that at a, at a really young age. Mm -hmm. Maria, I know um, you obviously had interaction with Anakala, what are kind of some of your fondest memories of Papa, as you folks call him? Um, yeah, just having an opportunity to be around him and the person he was. Yeah, definitely. He was 
probably the most present person you could ever meet. Like he could, he would be wherever he went, wherever, whomever he was talking to, whether it was my two-year-old daughter or someone who had a title or who was more important, he gave the same, the same kind of everything. He gave the same, he gave everything to whatever situation he was in. He could walk through the farmer's market and talk about their crops, come home and talk to my, the, the, the kids, go to the Senate and, you know, make things happen there. Where, wherever he was, he was present. He was, he gave a hundred percent. I think one of the, the best memories I have of him is when my family, uh, when we first started getting together and going down to Miloli'i, my family was going to come down and they're from Oahu. So, you know, the city people, <laughs> they were um, going to come down and he like pulled me aside and was like, Maria, and he had a notebook and a little pen, a little pencil, and he meant where it was all, pencils always lying around. And he asked me, what, what, what were everyone's names? How old are they? Where did they fall in the, in, the, in the lineup of siblings? What did they do? What did they like? And he jotted down all of these little things so that he could um, talk with them and have um, something, some kind of connection before we even got there. I think that's one of my, my best ones. Another one was when he took Iolana, and this was, she was probably only like four or five months old, and she was actually our first baby. And, my first child and I, I give him, <laughs> her to him down in Middle East. And when I come back, I went out swimming or something for like the first time and since I gave birth and um, he, when I come back, I said, I'm smelling her and she was, he fed her pickled onions. <laughs> I was horrified, but I mean that he just, he was, he was the best grandpa. He was such a, such a good grandpa. I couldn't, I can't even, I can't even stress how, how amazing having the two years that we had living here with him was for my daughter and for me. You know, as you're talking, Maria, I'm wondering, not to put you on the spot, as you think about kind of Kai's dad, Kai's ohana, his upbringing, do you see some of those characteristics in your husband? <laughs> Yeah, he's all over the place. <laughs> no. He doesn't sleep. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, he, Papa lived for other people. Like he didn't, like he would literally give the shirt off your back and gave you all of his time and, and all of your attention. Everything that he, everything that you were talking to him about was important at the top of his list. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's one of the things that Kai takes from that, his, his, uh, ability to to give 110 percent even sometimes when it takes away from me <laughs> and our family the give give giving is it's definitely from uh something directly from papa awesome what about you kai if you had to kind of do a little you know self-analysis what do you think from your formative years what are kind of maybe the top two or three values whether that's in a word or in a phrase that you know were instilled all those years ago that have stuck with you till to now till now uh, you know my dad would often say it's not what you receive in life uh that enhances your life it's what you give mm -hmm. and that uh um any opportunity you can to uh help somebody in need to um help lift someone up, to lend a hand, to um, offer advice, to inspire a child, to help a kupuna um, is, 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 brings value to, to, to your life and, and when you can share what you have with others. And, and he was very much that, that type of person. And so, um, you know, I try to do that as much as I can. Um, you know, I really enjoy... Uh, meeting with kids. I really enjoy inspiring kids to pursue some of the loves that I have in my life, like flying airplanes and, uh, uh, you know, my career in the military and the experiences that I have, um, you know, way before I was a, uh, elected official, you know, I would love to have, uh, um, aviation presentations and, and career days that I would attend. And Marie and I would attend them as, as much as possible for Hawaiian airlines, our company and to, you know, just uh, show kids that they can be anything they want to be, that you can grow up in Hawaii, you can go to public school, you can go to the University of Hawaii, uh, and you can 
you fly F-15 fighter jets. You can become a commercial airline pilot. You can be a flight attendant and fly all over the world. And uh, um, just instilling in kids that belief and sense that they can do anything they, they, wanna, they want to do. I think it's really important for local kids um, because this is a very, very competitive world that, that, that we're in. And so, uh, you know, I think um, I try to lead by example and, and, uh, and, and do that in my life as well. Okay, you, you touched upon, um, you know, children and school and I never got to one of my, the answers to my very first question was what school you went. Where'd you go to school, Kai? You know, that's uh, um, an interesting answer because I'm, I'm probably the first and, and only person you'll ever meet that went to all three high schools in Hilo. Mm -hmm. I went to YK High School, I went to St. Joseph's, and I graduated from Hilo High School in 1992. And, uh, you know, I wish it was because I was some all-star athlete and every high school in Hilo wanted me. That was clearly not the case. I was a... Mm -hmm. uh, I was a Kolohe Rapsco boy, like many uh, of us are growing up in Hawaii, you know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, those experiences and, and what I went through um, in my teenage years helped shape and make the person that I am today and really helped uh, lay the groundwork for my, uh, what I look at as really formative years post high school. Um, before I went to uh, the University of Hawaii at Manoa. You know, different people come into your life at different times. Uh, you never know who's going to come into your life and change your life. And for me, that happened when I was uh, 18 years old. And um, that has laid the groundwork for some of the successes and failures that I have had um, over the last, you know, 20 years. Hey, you know, there's the thing, the Kolohe ones, the Kolohe ones are the ones that get it done, so. I think you're probably a testament to that. Resilient, you know, yeah. Um, you know, you just mentioned about some of those, you know, we talked a lot about your dad kind of shaping you and you referenced, you know, someone or kind of some of the things that you went through right between high school and college. What were you kind of referencing about that? Uh, during, after high school? Right, right. And I don't know if that, you know, walks into, because I know one of the things that, you know, the stories that you and I have talked about a little bit about your, your process of going to Manoa, getting on the volleyball team, working through that. It definitely was a transformation. You know, my, my mom and dad uh, um, supported my love and interest in flying. And my mom, of course, like I said, who was a flight attendant, a stewardess at United Airlines, um, you know, we would often... My sister and I, with my dad, would go to the Hilo airport, would drop my mom off when United Airlines used to fly 747s out of Hilo. And we used to race across to the other side of the airport and just park the car and stand along the fence. If you can uh, just picture two little kids standing next to the fence waiting for this big giant 747 to prepare for takeoff. And we can see our mom, or at least what we thought was her, and we're waving through the to the fence and there, there she takes off um, and flying off to, you know, distant lands. And, and that we did over and over and over. And so I just had this love of flying early on. And so when I graduated from high school in 92, uh, rather than having a big graduation party or something that's pretty common here in Hilo, my mom and dad uh, gave me six weeks of flying lessons. And within two weeks of graduating from Hilo High, I was in an airplane flying out of the Hilo airport um, loved flying and ended up a year and a half later uh, a licensed commercial pilot flying tours up and down the Hamakua coast when I was 19 years old. Um, I was going to Hilo Community College and I, at the same time I met a uh, volleyball coach who had changed my life. His name was Pete Velasco and a few years after that I walked on with very limited experience playing volleyball to the 1994 University of Hawaii men's volleyball team. And I was the uh, last person to make the team. And that is a great story. One too long for this, uh, this uh, you know, talk story tonight. But I do tell the story uh, at a Hawaii Community College commencement that I gave two years ago. And, it, and it's a good story. And it's a story of inspiration and perseverance and dedication and hard work. And uh, it, it culminated in, um, what turned into a um, 
great opportunity for me to play volleyball at the University of Hawaii Manoa in the mid-1990s when we went to the national championship in 1996. Right. And I think, you know, when it, it <clears throat> what you said earlier that kind of sparked a memory for me about that, that story is this, the challenges, you know, that sometimes we experience in life in your, your circle island tour, if you will, of all the Hilo schools and the Hilo high schools, you know, it's a, sometimes it becomes a strength and an asset, you know, as you kind of work through these challenges and develop the mentality of what you were seeing earlier, yeah, for a lot of young kids, anything is possible. And, you know, you gotta stick to it, focus on it and go after the opportunities that are out there. Um, you know, I know that you, you, you talked about, you know, flying and that's your passion and you've done it um, as a <clears throat> commercial pilot. Of course, you served in the National Guard. Um, wanted to ask you guys about kind of because, right, you're both, your mother was a flight attendant. You are a Hawaiian Airlines pilot. Maria, you're a, a Hawaiian Airlines flight attendant. Um, how did all of that happen in terms of the Maria and Kai show? How did you guys meet? Because I would assume it has something to do with Hawaiian Air or that's how you guys met because you guys were the same place. How was that? Well, you know, we both had been through uh, previous marriages mm -hmm. and uh, I um, had a, a daughter out of my first marriage and so by 2007, I was back in Hawaii, flying for the National Guard. And one night at Hickam Air Force Base, when I was coming back in from one of my missions, uh, the bus driver who was driving the bus um, happened to be Maria's dad. And in the course of that conversation, we talked about Hawaiian Airlines and he mentioned my daughter working at Hawaiian. And at the time, I didn't know who Maria was, uh, but he mentioned her name. And uh, I went home later. My sister is a flight attendant also at Hawaiian Airlines. And I mentioned Maria's name to my sister, Noelani. And she said, that's the person I've been telling you about for a long time and you don't listen. And so I said, you know, like any, any local boy says, hey, you know, do you have a picture? Show me a picture of what Maria looks like. So she shows me a picture and I'm like, okay, you yeah. know, interested. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we we uh, connected and and uh, dated for several years, and the rest is history. You know, we uh, at the time I wasn't at Hawaiian Airlines yet, uh, and I was still trying to get to Hawaiian. Aloha Airlines was still here then, and I uh, was looking at maybe going to Aloha as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as luck would have it, uh, got picked up by Hawaiian Airlines in 2009, and then we were able to enjoy. Uh, several years of flying together and taking trips together and just enjoying life together before moving to Hilo and, and uh, starting our family. Having two beautiful girls. Oh, you remember it? I was like, what Maria's version? As or Maria, what was it? Okay, so let's all, like, I'm gonna just put it out there. Both of you are not hard to look at, easy on the eyes. So we're gonna, <laughs> what else besides Kai's no hair. Can you do <laughs> What was it that drew you to him? I, I think um, one of the things I noticed about him was that he treated other people the same way that he treated me. Hmm. It, was, it was like, you know, it was kindness, it was respect, it was just a, a straight up, no no bullshit kind of, um, sorry, uh, kind of uh, interaction. And what, I, and what I most liked about it was that it was across the board with everybody. It was with me, it was with the waitress, it was with the bus driver, <laughs> it, was with, with, it was with everybody. And, and I, I, that was attractive besides the other things sometimes. Um, but I think, you know, the same thing that makes him, make, that made it attractive back then is some of the things that we still that are, are challenging now, you know, the giving of himself to, to everything is challenging now. But um, back then it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't just trying to impress Maria. He really was. He really was, was like that. He really was like that, yeah. I mean, gentle. And I was flying a lot too, you know, I was flying for the National Guard at the time. 
we were doing missions all over the world. You know, I flew C-17s at the time for the Hawaii National Guard. And uh, I mean, there were many times I'd be calling Maria from Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean or from Japan. Oh yeah, he was persistent. He was and, persistent uh, all kinds of hours, all kinds of days, all these. Yeah, I was like, what? He's, he's going for it. Called her from the plane. <laughs> he didn't call her from the plane once. That was pretty impressive. I don't know that's, if that's legal, that's, but yeah, he did. <laughs> okay, he's winning. He called you from the plane. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there, there seems to be this um, theme of consistency and persistent and overcoming and, um, you know, from Bob right. That's right. to, 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 to winning this beautiful woman that's next to you and, you know, as someone obviously that's not only a friend but a constituent, I think that's, that's an amazing quality for you to have. You know, since you folks um, kind of talked about the Maria and Kai days when you folks were single, um, and now you folks have your two beautiful daughters, just for, I think a lot of us know them, but just, yeah, what are the girls' names, all of your girls' names, and how old are they? Alea, Alea Okalani, she's 16, she lives in Utah, um, Iolana, is six years old. Malaya. Iolana Malaya. She is six years old. She is currently homeschooling with me, Makahale. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> and our baby, our Muli, she is Namaka Okahai, is four years old. Beautiful. You know, obviously, girls. one of the ways that we all met um, and have gotten to know each other even more is through the Papahana, Olalo Hawaii, through the Hawaiian language programming and movement. Kai, what was, what was the reason behind that? You know, it's, it's our Olalo Hawaii is thriving, you know, relative to where we were maybe 30 years ago, but it's still, you know, it, it's a conscious decision and it's a commitment to make. Why was it important for you, for you, for you folks? You know, I've always been connected through um, our family and my dad and our kahele ohana to Milo'i. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother, she spoke fluent Hawaiian and I would often hear her speak Hawaiian with her friends that she would hang out with, especially when she was down in Milo'i. Um, I never learned Hawaiian myself. The first time I took Hawaiian was at UH Manoa for two years and had great teachers there um, that uh, Puakea Nogomeyer and Lalepa Koga and, and others that uh, um, helped to start to lay that foundation for Lelo Hawaii. Um, but I, and I also had the opportunity to live with Uncle Erika Anana. Uh, when I was going to Manoa, so I would stay up at their house in Pololo Valley uh, with him and Auntie Helen and spent many summers there. Uh, I never realized how incredibly uh, unbelievable Uncle Eddie was. And I wish I did. He was just Uncle Eddie to me when I was living at the Halle and he would drive to Kaala Farms in Waianae every morning. But anyway, if I had known that, how special he was, I would have really taken more advantage of that, especially when I was learning or attempting to learn Olelo Hawaii Manoa. Anyways, um, you know, our family's uh, connection to Olelo Hawaii was, um, uh, I guess, severed, stopped when my grandmother passed away. And I always uh, um, wanted to and, and dreamed of reinstilling the Olelo Hawaii language in, in, in our family or in um, my family. And so when our daughters were born and we were looking at uh, potential schools for them to go to, we'd always heard of the Punanaleo, didn't actually know anything about it. We knew Punanaleo was somewhere over there by Keao. And I remember that first day that we went and drove by it. It was like a Sunday. And I knew it was by the old Henry O, yeah, yeah, Henry. but not what he was, uh, except for the fact that a good friend of mine, Eddie Piki Hayward, was a Popa'i Pa'i teacher there in the uh, late 1990s. And I would go there when uh, Yota, Jeff Cabral, and others were there as well. And we went to the Punanaleo, and we said, hey, this looks like a great school and opportunity for um, uh, our, our, our youngest, Yolana. Uh, they had a Hi'ipepe program which uh, was unique to Hilo. It was an infant program uh, where you could enroll your uh, son or daughter there at nine months old. So we decided to do that. It, it was a big commitment, you know, and um, 
something that I know Maria was very hesitant to do because she spoke zero Olelo Hawaii at all. Yeah, but yeah, we yeah. knew that we wanted to uh, uh, give this a try. And, and part of it, I mean, we, we re really went the extra mile because not only were we going through the Olelo Hawaii classes at Punanaleo, but we were sitting in on classes uh, at Kahaka Ula. And Kiko Harmon was one of our uh, one and only teachers, I guess. We, yeah, we, took, we took like Hawaiian 101 like five times. <laughs> one uh, three. One or three, one or three. So we, we kept going every <laughs> semester back to uh, Kiko. Persistent. Persistent. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is a commitment, but it's one that uh, uh, has really changed our home. And uh, we can see the development in our in our daughters. It's it is not easy, but uh, you know I take great pride in knowing that um, our our daughters are learning Olelo Hawaii and that Olelo Hawaii is being spoken in our home. Uh, and and you know I kid you not, if you were to talk to Maria five six years ago when we started this journey, and you were to talk to her now, she speaks more Olelo Hawaii than I do because she is with the girls every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's a credit to her because we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for her. And so anyway, that's my manaho, but. Hey, it's a huge, you know, it's a huge commitment. I am not a Monkula, but I've been involved in the program, you know, um, in various capacities for a long time. And it is, it really is, it's a family journey. It's not just the you know, the kids are going to go to school at eight. We're going to keep yellow co at three thirty, four o'clock. Okay, Paul, it's this, you know, kind of almost like a lifestyle, if you will, that you have to embrace. You know, Maria, I wanted to ask you because you um, mentioned that you were born in the Philippines. Do you speak any Filipino? I do not. Do you My understand it? In several dialects. And I think just, I don't know if it was that generation or, or, or whatever it was, but the, the, the language didn't really get passed down to me. So I, I don't speak any other language, but barely English. Does, do you understand words? Like if you, if she uses certain words or anything? Here and there, here and there. My, my dad does really good, <laughs> but um, yeah, not, but not, not you, so much. You were, I guess that, you know, you were exposed to other languages besides English. Definitely, um, Japanese. Korean. A little bit of Korean. Um, Tagalog and Ilocano, which is what my mom speaks. Yeah. So yeah, what has this um, what has this journey been like for you to be a Makua Punanaleo, a Makua Navahi, to be a part of that Ohana network as well? Extremely challenging and extremely rewarding because those are, go hand in hand. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> the harder it is, the better it is. What they say. But um, yeah, it's, it was, it's an all in, it's an all or nothing kind of decision. And I, I don't think I knew that when I, when I joined, I, I, I guess you probably you may have, but I, didn't, I didn't get clued in to this until a little bit later. Um, they definitely, Punanaleo, I mean, Navahi and the whole Olelo Hawaii program opens their doors entirely to you though. Whatever, if, whatever kind of help that they can give you, it's yours. So this, this, um, this, this Kula, this, just this school became our whole life or is now our whole life. So I think one of the, one of the hardest, it becomes your family, it becomes your after school, it becomes your weekends, it becomes your holidays. I think that's probably one of the hardest things about Corona virus and not the kids not going to school is that our, 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 our family, our Ohana Makikula was everything to us, and now it's 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 um it's via Zoom, and it's it's as much as we can, as we can have it, but it isn't the same as it was, and we're, we're looking forward to when it goes back to at least, at least the, the new the new kind of normal. Correct. But you know, the Olelo Hawaii program for me was it still is very challenging. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm the only one going to the parent teacher conferences. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, shouldering all of the, um, all of those things. As far as, far as what, what, yeah, what I what I get out of it though is is priceless. And to give my kids the kind of grounding that they get from being a part of this is 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 incredibly special and is is everything for me. Maria, Maria said the word grounded, and I remember a good friend of mine, Chris Todd. Representative Chris Todd, uh, who uh, was a Hilo High Viking football coach. Uh -huh. 
-huh. And if you're a Navahi student, which is a laboratory school that, that is connected to Hilo High School, and you want to play high school athletics, you play for Hilo High School. And I remember Chris telling me a few years ago, he's like, you know, the Navahi students uh, that play on the football team um, are just, there's something different about them. And it's, it's, uh, and nothing against the other uh, students at Hilo High School or the players, but he noticed something different, whether it was their grounding, um, how they carried themselves. Uh, um, you know, there's a, there's a strict protocol that happens every morning at Nabahi. And uh, um, he was very impressed of the students that came from Navahi that played football at Hilo High School. And that was something that really um, stuck with me. And I, and I wanted to give uh, our children an opportunity to develop some of those, you know, um, Maoli Ola uh, um, values. values and, and uh, uh, attributes and things that they would carry with them. And, and you know, the, the school is fantastic. The Kumar are fantastic. I know it's a super challenging time right now for everybody. And, uh, you know, we're all in this together. You know, it's not just at Navahi and Punanaleo. It's at our DOE schools all across the state. It's at our private schools. It's at Kamehameha. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's a tough time we're all going through right now. So Maria, you have, um, I, we were talking early, earlier, Namaka is actually at, um, school because of the situation, preschool, they've, um, decreased the student population where she is, but, um, Yolanda is, um, at home, you were mentioning, how is that whole distance learning, keleao, if you will, just, you know, kind of being home. I think you mentioned you were homeschooled. So I'm thinking like, oh, maybe you're a little bit more off, maybe you're a little bit used to it, but yeah, what's that reality been like for you? It's it's probably harder for the kids. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes she wakes up and you don't, you, don't, you don't really think she's going through anything, any big changes or anything. But when she wakes up and says, you know, I can't touch my friends. I can't, I can't play with them. I can't play in the, in, at the, on the playground with them. Those kinds of things are really heartbreaking, yeah. but I mean, as far as the school goes, the kumus, the teachers are, are amazing. They try their hardest. And the biggest thing is just to keep the kids engaged. That's, that's the hardest thing. It's not what was they're actually teaching. It's the, it's the keeping the kid engaged. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to be home during this time and to be able to sit with her and to go through the lessons with her as much as and, and, and I'm, I'm learning as much as she is. You have to be flexible every day. There's new ways that are, that are new ways that, that Kula is being delivered to your, your family. So I, I just <laughs> try to wake up on the right side of the bed every morning and help her to do the same and to know that you just got to roll with the punches and look, look at what we do have. We have a Kumu that is trying their hardest, all the Kumu, and it's been, it's actually been really good she's she's doing pretty well i think right, so, right. yeah it's, it's, it's been it's been good it's been good i mean there's been those mornings that uh and th she's been doing this now for what two to three weeks yeah it's only two weeks and there's been a couple mornings that uh i've, I've uh found her crying and uh me or her <laughs> All of us. But, uh, <laughs> we're all crying. We're all crying, yeah. But uh, <laughs> she's been crying uh, because she says, you know, I want to see my friends and uh, I want to go to school. And, you know, I look back to March of this past year, we just, you take it for granted going to school. You know, it's just, you don't even think you're not going to be able to go to school. And, and of course, when school closed in March across the state and our country, we never thought this would be September 3rd. And we're still in the situation we're in now. And so it's super challenging, but um, you know, I just give credit to all the teachers uh, that, are, that are trying to do their best. Everyone's trying to do their best given the circumstances. We're lucky we have this technology that we have. Imagine if this happened 20, you know, 30 years ago, we'd never have computer. So Absolutely different constructs, man. You know, it's, it, and who knows, you know. We should have Zoom stock like five years ago. I know. I, we, I was just talking to a friend about that. Yeah, we could buy our own planes. No. Wow. <laughs> it. You know, and, and like, you know, one of the things that's kind of organically become a theme of the night is just, you know, getting through challenges and how much stronger you are after the fact. You know, and so maybe that's a, a vena 
a lesson yeah. in this whole pandemic, whether it's distance learning. And I know Maria, you're, um, you know, you mentioned your home, but that's because you're furloughed as a, as a flight attendant with Hawaiian Air. And so facing all of these, this kind of va pa'akiki or, you know, a, a stressful, challenging time, once we puka through this, we'll be so much better for it, you know. One of the things I wanted to kind of vala out really quickly about is, you know, it's Kai, Kai the public servant, you know, Maria, like you said, he like koko everybody, which is, a, it, and that's mekai, you know, I think for, a, again, as a, a friend and a constituent, very appreciative of that. Mm. But I also know, because we're talking story with both of you this evening, that your, your kind of your threshold and your gateway into becoming a senator wasn't a decision that was made alone for you, Kai, and it wasn't even um, a noi or a request or an offer that was made only to you. Talk to me a little bit about that situation. Well, you know, my dad was appointed by uh, Neil Abercrombie in 2011 to the state Senate. He had already retired from a long career uh, with the federal civil service. He was in his late sixties. And uh, when Neil Abercrombie came home to run for governor because of their long relationship going back to Middle East in the early eighties, uh, my dad helped run his campaign on Hawaii Island. And when there was a vacancy uh, in one of the state Senate seats, um, Neil uh, Abercrombie, Gov Abercrombie appointed my dad. And so from 2011 until 2016, my dad was Hilo state senator. And, you know, as someone who grew up in the Democratic Party, grew up uh, in politics with my dad, it just, you know, election season runs in our blood. And, uh, you know, we had helped so many different uh, campaigns together that we, we worked very well together. I was my dad's uh, behind the scenes campaign manager, you could say for his several reelections. And um, fast forward to 2016, my dad's 73 years old. It's Martin Luther King Day. We go to Kona, we come back and uh, in Hilo in the afternoon on Martin Luther King Day 2016, my dad is having a massive heart attack at our home right here in Hilo. And we raced out of the house. I drove my dad to Hilo Hospital. And uh, he was, uh, because at the time, Hilo Medical Center had no cardiac lab. You couldn't do a, a cardiac stint if you were having a heart attack. You had to be medevac to Oahu. Okay. So my dad uh, was medevac to Oahu. He was medevac to Queens. And uh, that time that he lost by not being able to get a cardiac stint, in uh, whatever blockage was happening, ultimately cost him his life because of the damage to his heart um, would cause him to uh, have subsequent heart attacks for over the course of the next week. Um, after the second major heart attack event he had had, uh, the doctor came uh, to me on a Saturday morning and said, you know, if your dad has another one of these, I don't know if he's gonna be able to pull through. And so I really think that all of you, not just yourself, but your entire family should um, take that time to sit down with dad as soon as possible and have that conversation that as a son or daughter, you are never prepared to have with your parent. Okay. And so uh, that Saturday night uh, was one of the best nights we ever had. Um, we had food, we had mele, all the kids were running around, other families were enjoying their ohana. In, and the, hospital. In the hospital, right? He, yeah, sixth floor, Queens. We was having one, Lu Ao, Middle East style. And uh, it was one of the best nights we had. And, and through the course of that night, uh, Marie and I both went in to go sit down with my dad privately. And that's when we started talking. And he brought up the subject that if he passed away, uh, would um, we be willing to consider um, replacing my dad in the Hawaii State Senate, specifically if I would submit my name to Governor Ige. And he knew how important that decision was uh, for not just myself, but for both of us. Maria at the time was seven months pregnant with Namaka. I'm in the Hawaii Air National Guard. I'm flying for Hawaiian Airlines. I'm 41 years old. The last thing I'm ever thinking about is, is elected office and politics. But you know, when mom or dad arguably ask you to do something for them. And it's one of the last things they'll ever ask. As a child, you never hesitate, you know? And uh, I remember looking over at Maria 
and we have this like, oh my God, you know, what are we committing ourselves to? But, you know, it was a decision that we, we made together. He knew how important it would have been for her to um, be as much of that decision as it was mine. And so, you know, we, we committed that we would do it. Two days later, my dad died. Two weeks later, I'm being sworn into the Hawaii State Senate as Hilo State Senator. It was, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And uh, um, here we are today. And I don't think we ever imagined when we were sitting in that room on that Saturday night at Queens Hospital that we would be on the verge of um, going to the United States Congress uh, in 2021. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just been a surreal experience, one that we never uh, planned to do. It, it dramatically has changed our life and our plans that we had for our life. But that's what life is like sometimes. It comes at you when you least expect it. It presents its toughest challenges to you when sometimes you're at your weakest. Mm -hmm. And you need people, you need a supportive spouse, you need a supportive family to get through this together. And uh, anyway, that's, that's my mana'o for that, Maria. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking as Kai's talking, you know, um, Maria, I, but and I, I'm thinking maybe other people are thinking that, you know, the both of you, right, pre walking into political office, right, you're not only have full time careers, but careers where you're literally all over the planet at any given moment, plus you have Keiki. And that, so that's already kind of your construct. And then you, you know, you put public service on top of that and Kai's kuleana and your kuleana as well. You know, like what we were just talking about. This isn't only just about Kai. Um, I'm just gonna jump out there on a limb and say that it's not, you know, always a walk in the park and it's not something easy. There are complexities about it, you know, and things are constantly kind of shifting what do you think, Maria, how is it that you kind of handle that or some of the things that you've experienced perhaps in life that allow you to kind of be able to work through this and be this kind of popa'a or this cornerstone for Kai in the work that he does? I like that, cornerstone. <laughs> yes. Um, well, growing up, I thought all I wanted to do was be normal. I just, all I wanted to do was grow up to be normal, but being a missionary's daughter and traveling all over the world and doing all kinds of things at all odd hours of all day and every day, I think really prepped me to be as flexible as possible um, to, to just kind of go with the flow of all the different things that, that are thrown our way. Now, I, there's been so many people who have, who have supported us. I have friends, of course, that keep me sane. I have moms. I have uh, other people who have helped me to um, kind of develop the strengths that I need. But I think definitely the flexibility part of, of all the things is probably the most important or the, or the, or the thing that I can fall back on the most. The, the flexibility in when he comes home and it's just a Tuesday night and the kids now think it's Friday night and they want, they want to go to sleep whenever they want. There's no schedule because daddy's home. Disneyland. I kind of have to give it to them because they didn't get to see him for the weekend. They didn't get to see him all week or they didn't get to, to do that. So having the flexibility to just go with the flow and have a glass of wine and chill out has has um has helped a lot <laughs> um people also when 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 he has to go on different engagements throughout the state or other places people jump in and they help and that's been that's been also our, our saving grace they invite us to their homes they let us stay they and they, they they let the kids play in their pools they supply us with with family time even though we're at you know he's at events a lot of people have given their given of themselves for us. Right. And that helps out a lot too. Right. Yeah, it takes a village. Um, Mr. Mr. Kohele from Miloli Fishing Village. Right, it's not easy though, you know, it uh, is very challenging and we have been pushed to our limits over the last mm -hmm. few years. Mm -hmm. It has been extremely challenging. Uh, 
And it's not easy to be gone a lot. It's not easy to, for Maria to um, almost be a single parent and raise our kids and just FaceTime doesn't do justice, right? I mean, you just, that doesn't work. And so, but it is tough, but you know, we, I think at the core of it, we really believe that we're doing, that the sacrifices we're making are going to contribute to a better world for our daughters, for the future of Hawaii, for the children of Hawaii, and ultimately for our country. You know, and I think uh, 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 the type of leadership that I hope I am able to bring uh, to mm -hmm. our country is, is what it is most needed right now. And, um, and, and it's, it's, this is a journey, you know, life is a journey and uh, you maximize every day you can. I tell you what we've started to do most recently, uh, and I really, really enjoy it. We're on like weekend two of this. Okay, what? It's every weekend we've been planning to do something, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we work hard during the week and we, we play hard and we enjoy our family on the weekend. And I have been leaving my cell phone home when I leave on the weekend. That's you. And I don't like leave home, like not like turn off, put in the glove box and maybe you, you know, hey. squeeze them in at late at night. No, this is, I leave my phone home. I don't know what's going on. I don't check Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I take no phone calls and I just check out. And my sole focus is Maria and our girls. And I really enjoy it. And so whoever's still going to staff me in the future better be ready for that because I'm checking out on the weekends. But, uh, you know, you, you got to check out and you have to, you have to be present because my kids, they, they, they know it. They sense it when it's daddy's when it's daddy and the kids time and they see me grab my phone i can see the disappointment in their eyes i can also see the disappointment in her eyes and she at this point she, oh, she just won't see that she won't say it anymore <laughs> but i see it she's like hey bro come on you know you've been gone all day put your phone away you know you get the mockers she give you the look though. Give a look bro. look at exactly right there that's the one. So, okay. this is very 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 powerful though Yes, yes. Um, but no, I, I, you know, again, mahalo to both of you for being up for the challenge, you know, just, and, and all of these things that you guys have shared tonight, you know, I'm thinking, it sounds super cliche-ish, but, you know, like, you were kind of ho'omakauko ia for this. You were prepared for this, kind of in your, your experiences, both of you, you know, growing up, um, and just the career path that you've taken and this notion, you know, I was telling Maria earlier, um, I'm a preacher's kid too. And so, you know, this notion that your ohana, it, it's not, it may not necessarily be the people that in your house every night, you know, there's this, this collective that, that dad, you know, is, is helping to kokua or mom is helping to kokua. And so, just again, as a friend to just mahalo the two of you for doing that, making it work, sticking together, you know, at all of these things that you folks are uh, taking on, not only as a family unit for you folks, the four of you, the five of you, but literally for all of us, the external family, you know, mahalo, ya oe kai, ya oe ke kahi, Maria. Mahalo. We really appreciate you um, for what you do as well. and. Guys, we were in Vala all Vala all talk story for like 56 minutes. I feel like we never came up for a breath, but yeah, just if you either of you have, you know, any parting words, and although it was just kind of conversation between the three of us, you know, we have a bunch of people that are still um, sitting here sharing and watching in on the Facebook Live. If either of you have Manao to the poet, to the Arahua Aloha. Mahalo for everyone's kind words and the actions that you show our family and my kids. I know they're, they're all over social media and everyone recognizes them first. <laughs> yeah, they're more, they're more popular than we you, are. Thank you, Mahalo, for taking care of them. <laughs> it doesn't go unnoticed. Mahalo nui loa. No, you know, we just really appreciate everyone who joined us tonight. And of course we want to appreciate and Mahalo, Amy, you know, Kalili, all the way from the North Shore. Uh, for joining us and helping to moderate this. And, um, you know, we just wanted to give people an opportunity to, um, 
hear a little bit about what you might not know about Kai and Maria and our family. And we're just like everybody else. We're hardworking. You know, we live in Hilo. We're grounded. Uh, you know, we go to the same challenges that everyone else is going through right now. And it is a tough time. You know, it is a uh, uh, time in all of our lives that hopefully we never have to go through again. Um, but, you know, we're all in this canoe together and uh, we're not perfect. We learn from our mistakes uh, and we try and raise each other up. And I think that's really what we need to do right now, right? Sometimes there's too much ama crab syndrome in, uh, in the world and we're trying to pull people down rather than lift them up. And so, uh, you know, we're just blessed to have the lives that we have had. You know, we have lost dear friends this year along the way and that has been deeply uh, um, tough and personal for us. Um, but, you know, we're blessed to be here and, and we're looking forward to this journey uh, that we're about to embark on. And we're so very honored and privileged to, to um, uh, carry that, uh, that responsibility uh, that comes with um, putting yourself out there to be the voice of the people. And I, I couldn't think of a better time to do it than right now. You know, I always say I walk in the footsteps of uh, my ancestors and I think often about people like Prince Kohio and Senator Akaka and those that came before me, my father and others uh, that I hope to represent in Congress. You know, this is just the first of uh, a series of talk stories. Uh, next week, Thursday night, different moderator, but we will be talking about uh, veterans uh, issues and veterans healthcare and veterans homelessness here in Hawaii. And so next week, Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m., um, have a good panel of uh, panelists that are going to be coming on. And I'm looking forward to, uh, very much forward to talking about some of those issues more specific to Hawaii that have a federal nexus. But, you know, just on behalf of our ohana and our kids and our family, mahalo. To you, Kai Maria, to everybody that joined us tonight via Facebook Live. Have a safe evening. Everybody take care. Be safe during this kind of crazy COVID va. But homalie. Aloha.